because the most precious things we have is time. And I don't want to waste your time, and I don't want you to waste my time. Damn. Right? And the only way I can I can um, guarantee that I won't waste your time is because I'm giving you the best fucking energy I have yeah. and the best psychology I have and the best actions I have. And I want the same in return. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm committed to giving you my very best. And time is your most precious thing you have. I Then agree. it's life. Mm -hmm. Because you can have life and don't know what to do with time. So you're wasting your fucking time. Yeah. Okay, therefore you're wasting life. That's, that's, that, take it to the bank. Yeah, take it. Life is definitely simple, we make it complicated. So my goal in life right now is to make sure that I share my wisdom to the next generation. Today we're joined by my human puppies, Andre and Calvin. And we're talking about how my journey affected their lives, good or bad, and how growing up in Inglewood and South Central has made them the men that they are today. One of the many conversations I'm planning to have with my boys, so please enjoy. All right, so my next guest, they're being with me way before I came to Earth. They're part of my ancestor um, lineage. They are part of my um, existence on this earth, and they're going to be part of the rest of my life and eternity. And um, those guys are the most precious things besides me to my mom. They're my kids. And one of the, one of the, the things that people always ask is not so much about me as a dog whisperer. It's not so much me as a better human, better dog. It's me and South Park. <laughs> that's what the world really knows me the most because South Park is way more popular than and I'm saying it with humbleness uh, I'm saying it with the whole truth because I want you to meet my kids in a whole different light I want you to meet my kids um, uh, like for the first time when they when they when they saw me in South Park because I can reveal a lot of of the things we have gone through as a family um as my whole existence in America, and as a father, as a human being, as a Latino, as an immigrant, as a husband, as a dreamer, as an animal person, as a spiritual person, uh, you name it, they're, they've been there. They've been practically with me. Uh, Andres, 28. Calvin is 24. 24. 24. I've been in America... What, 31 years, 32 years, 32 years. I came here when I was 21, when I was 21. So my kids have been with me from the beginning, me speaking English, me getting my papers in America. I mean, the whole scoop But how we did it as a family. How do, how do we, how do we did it as a three males, you know, existence, surviving, learning, um, helping each other. Uh, I didn't get the support of my family from Mexico. So our family was 65 dogs. And of course, their mom family definitely helped a lot as a grand grandparents. I'm very grateful of that because my kids grew up with at least two grandparents. I grew up with three, you know, so that's that's a big deal. We always, obviously, we want to go into details about, you know, where I'm from uh, and how I grew up and, and uh, all of that great thing that makes makes us who we are. Right, so our ancestors, uh, the moment in time that you were born, in your life, and where. In my case, I grew up in uh, close to Culiacán, Sinaloa. Born in, in Culiacán, Sinaloa, the times of the cartels. Um, that's where I grew up, right? So South Park is not the only thing I I've been I've been through. Jumping the border is not the only thing I've been through. Uh, I speak two languages, three languages, because I speak animal as well. Just for you guys to experience how I raised these kids, uh, very spiritual, very instinctual, uh, very emotional, and I, I learned as I went. So my, my whole intellectual was developed as I, I went through things in life, right? So that, which is really important for me because I wanted my boys to retain what I retain, my spirituality, my instincts, my passion, my creativity, and of course, taking care of the body and how 
I now see myself as a healthy male, but before that as a healthy human, and before that as a healthy spirit, right? And, and so all of that, my kids have gone through everything, e everything. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to hide anything, right? So if my kids have seen me in my worst and my most lowest time, you know, when I try to commit suicide or, or they're getting them divorced or, or oh, 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 all of that stuff, um, uh, you know, uh, going through the lawsuits, um, uh, anything, anything, anything. I mean, um, it's, it's, I think the most important thing I have, I have uh, been able to do for my kids is to live with high level of honesty, high level of uh, humbleness and, 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 um, and grounding and, and uh, vulnerability, um, um, you know, it's, can't hide anything. I don't know how to hide things. And it's just what it is, right? When I'm happy, I'm super happy. And when I'm sad, I'm fucking hot sad. <laughs> it's just what it is, right? It's just, it's the rainbow, right? All the emotions, all of them, all of them. I like it. I think it's healthy. I don't believe in suppressing things. Um, I believe in expressing things. I believe in growth. I believe in uh, rehab. I believe in um, asking the right people. You know, um, I believe in praying. I believe in uh, helping animals. And I believe in dream as crazy as you want to be. I want to be the best doctor in the world in Sinaloa. You know, as, as a kid... And, you, and they know exactly where I'm from, so they know, you know, what what was available to me at that time. And but which is important because they see that even though all these obstacles are in the way, can you achieve whatever dream you have? So on that, what do you guys thought about South Park? What was your first first feeling? How old were you? When did it come up? Like 20 years ago. I was in. Fourth grade. Fourth yeah, grade. You were little. You were yeah. little. Fourth we were like your grade. mom and I. So I was probably like 10. We're like hesitating on letting you watch because we didn't want you guys to learn like the, stupid the, stuff. Yeah, but you never you let will. us. You Absolutely. Never, when you you never let us watch cartoons anyways because they uh. would. You never let us watch cartoons. Especially the Cartoon Network, you never let us watch growing up because they would always say the word stupid or shut up, and you're like, nope. Which, you, it's funny because Horrible. I grew up not saying bad words. Yeah. You know my mom. Yeah, of course. And, right. and, and That's the, healthy. You don't need yeah, to You don't really need to be taught that at a young age either. You don't practice that when you're a kid. But I remember going to grandma's and we'd watch cartoons. Well, let, me, let me put a bus on that. So, like I said, I want you to meet us and in, in in, in who we are uh, around our family. Not who we are on TV, but who, like what people betray us, right? But... When I'm in front of my dad, it's no bad words, right? The level of respect that I grew up with, that I saw my dad doing it to his father, my grandfather, their great-grandfather, died 105, Teodoro Millán Guillén. Angulo, perdón. Um, my dad was the, the most respectful son, more than me, okay? Because my dad never made a mistake. My dad never got mad at my grandfather. I have. I catch my dad one time cheating and I went and confront him right because it's like I saw my mom being so sad right and and, and so but I never and he never mm. never ever ever practiced that yeah you know he so definitely gives the level of energy. respect and that's why South Park was such a big deal yeah. for your mom and I well you made it an event right you made it something where yeah. like okay we're gonna go home we're gonna sit as a group as a family yes. and we're gonna watch we were this. in their grandmother's home yeah yeah, it was Don, Doña Juanita yeah. and, and Don Pancho. Yeah. I remember we all couldn't stop laughing because Matt and um and what's what, what's Matt Stone and Trey Parker and Trey yeah. Parker um they so like there's a way to like mock something right yeah but the more authentic you are about it the funnier it is because it's true it's on it's their honest uh, mimicry right mm -hmm. and they they were so honest about what they actually thought that you did. And they use keywords, the same keywords that you used to use. Um, and because of that, you applying it to a child was a just a hilarious concept because Which by the way is how anyways. you guys grew up. Yeah. Exercise discipline and affection. So yeah, but without seeing it like as like something I have to do no. or it's like I nurture that right. Yeah. yeah. So it's normal. 
but to you it was hilarious it was hilarious the moment where you you put carmen on his side that's when i, that's when I lost it yeah. that's what that's when i lost it and he 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 like chill down <laughs> That was too funny. You know that, right? Yeah, I think what for me, I was like more prepared. I'm like, dang, I know South Park. I know the reputation, and I know because my cousins, you know, Junior Vicente, uh, not Vicente, um, yeah, uh, Vicente, his yeah, um, Vicente, Vicente's son, Junior, my yeah. cousin who went to the Air yeah, Force. Yeah, he was watch. He was the one who put me on to Family Guy and to all the shows that I was not allowed to watch. But on, you know, every time I go to the cousins. Just say, oh, there's always different. In a Latin, I feel like in a Latin family, I mean, this family is all over the place. But in the, in the family that we had, there was always that one cousin who was allowed to do the things that you weren't allowed to do growing up. So then when you would go and hang out with that cousin, you would be like, yo, what do you got for me? Right. Or like, hey, what have you seen that I've never been exposed to? So he put me on to South, uh, South Park and Family Guy. And so when I would watch South Park, I realized all the ones prior to the ones that was your episode they were going to make fun of, right? There was mm -hmm. always disrespect. There was always mm -hmm. some form of like... The only two episodes I saw before that was the one on Oprah and with Tom Cruise. Yes, but... Do you, so when... You know, like, were those, those are big people. Those were intense episodes. They, right? they, 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 they'll they put the... Yeah. The That's Oprah what I love people. about yes. Matt Stone and Trey yeah. Parker is they don't... Damn who... Yeah, who they're, they're, yeah. Uh, they're, yeah but they're, what's that's it why I was like, oh man, this is going to... And then me knowing that before going into it, I was kind of worried about how you would take it because I was, I remember being like, I really hope they don't hurt his feelings, right? <laughs> because that's, to be a cartoon is one thing, especially to be a cartoon that has been popular and it was something that was also by a lot of people around, you know, because it was on Comedy Central. Remember how they prepped your your intro, right? It was the nannies and the super nannies gonna rehabilitate Cartman. Right, right. So and I was like, dang, they're really gonna mess him up because they made the one nanny go psychotic. Right. And then the other nanny is like, I can't do this. And he spits in that woman's mouth, right? Yes, and he's yes. like, and so, um, Lucho. And so I was like, dang, they're really gonna, they're really gonna throw him under the bus. And then when it came to, when they came down to it, the whole like stereotypical, the way that you would talk, I was like, okay, that's cool. What else they got for us? And then when the they, outfit, yeah, the <laughs> outfit. I was guys, that dying. outfit is real. I went to Costco, yeah. and bought that outfit. Yeah. Okay, that was uh, that's our original uh, uh, navy blue. Uh, uh, a button shirt with uh, with the khaki pants. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Costco. If you outfit. see a lot wow. of the Dog Whisper episodes, you feel that vibe, right? You feel the outfit vibe. I wonder you always if that's had a like lot a of spirit Halloween ups. costume. Yeah. So you see that it's on spirit Caesar spirit Milan. Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> the dress of a Caesar Whisper. Milan. That'd be but hilarious. Yeah. No. Um. I, cool. I thought. I thought like. I really hope that they don't hurt his feelings. But then when you started laughing, and. Being somebody who's not accustomed to cartoons with bad words and somebody who doesn't like to be represented in that manner. My cartoons were the Flintstones. Yeah, Flintstones. Yeah! The Smurfs. And, and the Jetsons. And the, yeah. That, so, and the Pink Panther. I think that was cool. You know, I thought that was like, wow, they really, they really made my dad shine without making him feel bad. Like right. nothing you did that episode was like dramatized. Like it wasn't like, you know what I mean? It wasn't really... Because you know your t the touch, the 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 dog bite. They could have gone, you know, out of proportion with it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It made it dramatic. But they, he, you did it. He, he did it exact. They saw your timing. They 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 saw your confidence. So they, it was accurate. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, especially when uh when you left. Oh uh -huh. yes, she's like, yes, that's what I was about to say. I was, I have tickets for you. We could go see the the opera. And he's like, no, no, something about the butterfly. Yeah, butterfly. It was some butterfly opera or something. Right. Some play. No, you're just a client. Yeah, you're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was dying. I was dead. Uh, I gotta go home. Yeah, I gotta yeah. go home back yeah. to Los Angeles. <laughs> and the way you said it, but I thought we were making a connection. Yeah, it's like, no, no you're just you're a client. Like, I was, d and, and was it great. just, it was so funny because you, when you go to those people's homes and help them. It's that they form this type of bond, like you helped me regain some sort of establishment or foundation. Therefore, they feel like, oh man, this is a good guy. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, this is my life. Like, <laughs> this, yeah. and you're just a, another help, another person I'm gonna help, you That's know? Right. That's right. And so, and it was just so interesting to see as a kid. Now that I watch it as an adult, I'm like, damn, that was interesting. Or damn, how did they do that? How did they think of this concept? 
And By the way, everybody from Colorado, when they come to me and say, I'm from Colorado, I know you from South Park. Yeah, yeah. I think they don't know funny. me from my own show. They yeah. know me from, from the South Park, South Park yeah. episode. Yeah. No, but I think that was, I was a very, because now you watch, if you watch all the other episodes, it's really, you really can't come across something like that anymore where they, they don't really attack that celebrity. Right. And I, I definitely am very thankful for uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker for not doing that, especially, like I said, it was your first time ever being represented in a cartoon in hey, that they, manner. They must have really they respected really, you. Yeah, they yeah. really respected you. They must you. have really, oh, really liked me. Like, yeah. Same thing. I, I mean, same love. thing. No. It's love. Trust, respect, and love is three different things. Don't tell me it's the same. <laughs> Because we, we work with dog lovers. And, yeah. Okay. And, and, and love and well, trust they is not still, the same. Well, they still, you know. Well, listen. They didn't no want to do what, you matter, matter in, what it is, like, wrong. I re- I'm thankful for them to do it the way that they did That's it. That's right. Because that was really. So what guys, they did to Kanye, yeah. what they did to Kanye. <laughs> love, thank you so <laughs> He'll much. He'll never recover from yeah. that. Thank you so much for the yeah. trust, respect, love to That was awesome. You guys Park. are really awesome Team. for that. Yeah. Yes. I, really, uh, I, I am way bigger. Because of them and Oprah. A lot of people who come up, there's like, hey, you know, Andre, I really love your dad and Dog Whisper, but I think the funniest episode I've ever seen is the South Park episode of him. It's like, that's not Dog Whisper. <laughs> that's South Park. <laughs> you know, like, that's South Park. What, what do you guys remember from South Central? I, me- I have a good memory. The, so the like. Raspado Man. <laughs> Raspado Man? Which one? The guy who would come with tubs of, of like Italian ice. That's Mazatlan. No, that's everywhere. But that, that was, was in South Central. Really? He would come, yeah, the lime. You would get the lime one. The lime Raspado. I'm Maybe it wasn't Raspados. It was probably the smoother, the smoother ice. <laughs> sugar. He remembers sugar. But yeah, it was it was bomb. He had he had these tubs. And in Inglewood, what do you guys remember yeah, about Inglewood? I have a good memory, so I know a lot. So if you just reference going something. to the 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 Liquado place. Oh, uh, yes, that's like uh, Jamaican. Simply food, sim- <laughs> simply, simply wholesome. wholesome, simply wholesome, simply and La Brea. Wholesome. Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, off La Brea yeah. and Overhill. La Brea, and Overhill. what are you doing, Twitchy? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was uh, uh, food. the places that Mostly I, food. Yeah. I used to take my kids we when st- we I were like go. I still go. It's great when we were like uh, that was practically all I can afford. Mm-hmm. We didn't know. You know? Any. Yeah, no, no. I mean it was great. It was great. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you mornings remember were, about Inglewood? Inglewood, I remember something out of elementary. Uh, what about uh, that restaurant? I'm we talking used about to the go to, uh, having breakfast. Oh, oh, fabulous burgers! Fabulous. Yes, <laughs> yeah, fabulous is great. <laughs> oh man, well, same same yeah. owner was an Italian guy yeah. with a very young wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was. It was good at that time, but now you go there, it's not the no? same. It's not. No, I, I've it's been. It's same. not the same. We used to walk there. Yes, yes, yeah, with the dogs. Yeah, and then have the dogs pull there. up on yeah. the side. Yeah, that was cool. I was. I'm talking about the the, the place where it was part of your stop, um, and they'd have like pictures of like fruits on the front. And it was a blue place. The Bionicos. And then we see, yeah, ah, yes. yeah, 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 that's yeah. the first place yeah, I had yeah. the the okay. liquados. That's and then, a gauge. Yeah, yeah, gauge. Off gauge. And then yes. when we would when we would take the, the pack for a walk in that's South, South Central. Central. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when we, we would take for the the uh, the pack for a walk, uh, in the bike, and you were in rollerblades and stuff, we would go eat um, huevos con jamón y frijoles like at this place. La barca. That's mm. the one, La barca. You know what I'm talking about? La barca Jalisco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was that just was breakfast in food. Yeah. yeah, that was right by Tampa. It was super Huntington close. Beach. Yeah, Huntington Park. Hunting, Hunting, Hunting Park yeah. Wasn't it close to the to the place? Because I remember we it would take like twenty minutes for us. We'd to have like to rollerblade, pull rollerblade yeah, back or to, to the, La Barca. The we'd have to no. pull, yeah. take the van. Yeah. But to Tams, we'd pull up on the on the blades and we'd order and we'd take it to go mm-hmm. and we'd eat it at the restaurant. I have remember so much. And there was like a like a like a little grocery store on the side where where I think Eric would would get us sweets. También el Jose. There's, el Jose. there's the mm, breakfast yeah. restaurant. You know, Latino breakfast restaurant. And then the little, oh, little yes, the shop. one in the corner, That's the, the one, one in the corner. About. They had the big um, jukebox machine right there, and then they had the people right there, and they loved when you'd pull up because they would be uh, huevos estrellados with jamón, and then you would always have that, always, always, always con frijoles y queso arriba, boom. And then we'd eat it, and then we just it was on the corner. It was where the McDonald's you would take. So us this to. is a this is a trip, right? Because we we come all the way from Inglewood. And, and the kids, uh, Calvin sometimes was in a stroller when you were little, uh, and then uh, and a bike, and then on a bike, and then sometimes in a kangurera, uh, a bjorn, yeah, a bjorn. whatever thing. Yeah. I never put you in front; I always put you yeah. in the. They back. have back bjorns. Yeah, and and Andre was already on a bike, mm-hmm. and then we are with 40, 40 dogs minimum, All right? So I'm bringing the kids to have a day with me, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, otherwise I couldn't see them. So I have to go get them uh, in Inglewood and then bring them to South Central. 
but it was it was a super adventurous, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So here I'm raising Long. two kids in Inglewood and South Central, walking a pack of dogs. Cause that's how I get I get paid, and I have to feed these guys, mm -hmm. having forty dogs, mm -hmm. and I have to juggle, 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 yeah. <laughs> juggle, yeah, juggle, yeah, yeah. juggle <laughs> those things, raising two humans and having the responsibility of 40 dogs, minimum. One of my favorite memories, I would say, was when Calvin was in the stroller and you would take them and you would have the blades, right? Yeah. And you say, Andre, make sure nobody falls behind and I'd be in the back in the, with the right. bicycle. But the amount of trust that you would put behind me because there was nobody, but you would have this tight quarter kind of thing, yeah. right? Because when you would bend the corner, all of them would bend, mm -hmm. right? Like a school of fish yeah. boom boom and they would all find the, like follow this file line right yeah. and so when a dog would fall back you would give me a stick to help mm -hmm. right to help push you say don't touch them just go behind and move i'm move talking forward. to my kids right now lucho Shh, lucho yeah i got it no i got it and so um i would go behind and they would go right and the fact that you would trust this process how did you trust the process? And then we'd go, we'd do three miles. We'd go around the post office. Remember that yeah. big post yeah, office? Yeah, yeah. Man, that, and I would be like, that's a nice the, one, right? That was a was really flat. good one, yeah. yeah. In flat land, the, the, yeah. the And then the alleys, sidewalk. remember the alleys? Yes, the fa oh, oh, yes, yes. In South Central, you have to go through these alleys, mm -hmm. which for sure every warehouse was a has business. to have a dog. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. So our pack, my kids, have to go through that obstacle course. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, that's, that's street cred. Yeah, yeah. That's, you have to walk Everybody knew through us. it. Everybody knew it was you who was coming That's because right. all the dogs were off leash. It's, there's people back then that would walk their dogs or they would run the dogs. And it wasn't something that just automatically started, but you were the one who did it off leash with dogs that you were rehabilitating, with dogs that had these past. Oh, nobody was walking in South Central with 40 dogs. Yeah. And then two kids. Yeah, and two kids. In, in Latino. And the, and, the, and the oldest kid is in the back, you know, and the oldest right. kid is in the back helping. Right. It's, but, which is very Latino to yeah. see kids helping the family. That's right. normal to them. But nobody had 40 dogs. No, nobody. Off leash. Nobody. Rottweilers, pit bulls, German Yeah. Dogs. You know, you see that you go to New York and you see the, the dad, you see a dad running with their child in sports gear, athletic yeah. gear, running with their kid in the thing with two, two seat strollers or whatever you see him. You were doing that yeah. with rollerblades yep. to go faster for the dogs yep. and stimulating the child's visual, yep. right? And the other child is not only physically exercising, mentally staying focused. Yep. So you're you're uh, you're doing all these things to help Twitching. and to follow the process of following through, yeah, a fulfillment of all these things. Well, I have to listen now that I now that I can see and break it down for people, and even for my own self. I have to believe. We have to be instinctual. Mm. We've never done it before, so mm -hmm. I need I need to make sure your instincts get triggered by putting you in in in, in, in tough situations, mm -hmm. right? Of course, we we love dogs as a family, and just you guys were kids, so it's it's, it's games or or animals. So that that gets nurtured, and the creativity is where we're we gonna go. Mm. Yeah. Every single day was different, right? Every, every single day was different. Mm -hmm. So now that it's spirit, instinct, heart, mind, that's how I did it. That's how I did it. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't rational. It wasn't like a, somebody else did it and I can follow the blueprint. And how do you raise two kids with 40 dogs and achieve a dream, you know, and you have no paper and you learn English. It was no, not, no blueprint for that. Yeah, that was weird how you, in my eyes, that was very weird. Because Sugar nobody guided. else was doing it. So Andre and I, so let's talk about the LA Times time. All right, so Andre and I were in downtown LA, and that picture, that big picture, a uh, rectangle picture, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, was in the back of the MTA buses. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and Andre said, Pop, you're right there. And I said, where? And that's the first time I saw the picture in the LA Times. That was before the interview. That was dope, I remember that. So that picture right there. Um, has so much history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? no, I, I do remember that. We were on the rollerblades. No, 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 no. We're going to the market. No, 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 no. no. The meat market. No, no, no. We were in the Astro Van, and you were sitting there. We were in downtown LA, mm. and 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 uh, and we 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 literally stopped behind this MTA bus, mm -hmm. and of course I'm looking at the road and looking at everything, but I'm not looking at the picture. You 
look at the picture and say, Pop, that's you in the picture. <laughs> and, and say, wow, we're, we're in the back of every empty yeah. bus. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Now we went to celebrate at Astro's. <laughs> because we were in the back of yeah. the empty buses. So, so Astro, Astro Burger is, without a doubt, one of the cheapest burgers. Uh, at that time. Uh, you, I mean, they were this big. Yeah. Remember? Humongous. Like humongous burger. That, for us, was a place to celebrate. Right? That's the time that we, we celebrated uh, that. I remember one of my favorite times seeing you on the, on the billboard was definitely when when the dog whisper finally came out and you were one billboard and it was just you like this and it was your face and you had like dark hair right and i and i was like that's crazy like people who are equivalent to brad pitt and, and leonardo dicaprio and all the movies that we watched growing up i was only only those type of people get put on because it costs money you know what i right. say i say but how, you know how, how do you get up there it costs money it costs money and i would be like wow so it when you got first put up on there, I was like, wow, somebody paid money to put my dad on the <laughs> this. This is cool. This is cool. He's really American now. Yeah. yeah I think my, really. my proudest moment was when you had absolutely nothing to do with the movie, but you were invited to it. Like, you were invited to the premiere because they wanted you to, you know, as like a... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not sure why they invited you, but you were there. <laughs> and then, and then everybody was like, wow, <coughs> what's on Caesar? It was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, movie. The one that came out, and I, I brought, like, plastic swords on my back. Do you remember that? No, yeah. Wait, the, the new one? The premiere? No. Wow, it's amazing that they, for you, that's your proudest moment. Yeah. Because you've been dressing up your whole entire life. Yeah, yeah but then right? I had some kind of animation. Some I had the chance you always hit. to dress up yeah. because you were invited somewhere that had nothing to do with you. That's, <laughs> how, that's how much power I realized an influence that you this had. This is the first time I'm finding out yeah. about this. This is the proudest moment for my son. I was invited to, to, to the premiere the of the oh Ninja my Turtles. My oh. And he can dress up. <laughs> Calvin has been cosplaying it's, it's, forever. It's on. Um, it's on. But this guy has been dressing like Lodi? like costume the, the real his one? whole the life, ones. his whole yeah, entire when life. They, when they first like made it like CGI. Oh yes, it's an old yes. old one. Yes, I do remember the cartoon. Yeah, I brought I brought my my. And uh, Andre has always been with a whole bunch of kids, right? Uh, like uh, for Andre was like the biggest thing, is his friends, his friends, his friends, his friends, his friends, his friends. Playing, 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 playing. That that's it. That was that was his thing. Well, I'm good at team games. That's yeah. Why. Well, he and Andrew was always with the pack, mm -hmm. and Calvin was always creating something for himself. Mm -hmm. It has to be a costume. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. Calvin then, always wore costumes. Yeah. Calvin, and then you have to spend time. Yeah. Because he's gonna tell you what he's gonna do in that costume. Yeah. Oh, so he just had a horse in the back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Andre wanted to spend time with his friends. That's that's the, that's. That was it. That, to them, that was heaven for them. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm, crazy. Mm. Yeah, like I became famous and I got jumped because of his fame. And he's but that was not because never of fame. And he's never made hating. up for it. Well, haters, if yeah. you're famous enough. Yeah. How so, come, we're, listen, guys. But what, my how kids are in South Central. So, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're in whatever I can afford at that time, whatever I can give them. Uh, again, I grew up in Sinaloa. Uh, the, 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 the possibility of me being killed or hurt or, or every second mm. and so here i am <clears throat> raising two kids in, in inglewood california mm. and the uh the school system is it is what it is right and then of course i keep working i keep working i keep working we used to live in a garage we used to yeah. live in uh and in, in in one, one 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 bed in, in a back house, in a back house. Uh, we live in a studio in a back house that smells like weed mm -hmm. that's, that's right so we live in a back house <laughs> that smells like weed mm -hmm. and, and, and the that's, people were nice though the landlords were very yeah nice. the landlords were great but this is what i can have so so again they were just they were just living in a place that smells like weed i was living in a place they sell <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> they <sell> weed. <laughs> yeah back then you it know? was different back then so, weed was very like so <laughs> So this is what it is, right? So I, 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 I mean, I want you to know, uh, to know what I raise my kids, right? Mm. That's all I have. It's not like a purposely can. Oh, I'm gonna land in Inglewood and I'm gonna meet their mother and we're gonna have this and we're gonna live in the back house. Their house that smells like weed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the crime rate is kind of high. 
at this time because it's the nineties. <laughs> it's the nineties in Inglewood. You so, know, yeah. but if you go, if you rewind my story, it's like, oh, my dad's. Well, I'm gonna live in Culiacan. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. have children and a place where crime that, is quite high. Eh, <laughs> was it as quite high as it was back home? What do you mean? Well, Inglewood was uh, was crime due to racism at that time in the nineties, yeah. and then crime your crime, crime well, your crime was more like. Territory crime. It's it's more money, right? So it's more money. They have more weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, they have more people. They're so more did you, organized. Did you not see it as They're that bad then when we were of in England? Of course. You still saw it as like oh shit, we're in England. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I never seen gang. I seen cartel. But that's the same thing. But no. You probably didn't. No, no. Because the gang is in the street. Oh, that's true. Cartel is an organization. Yeah, cartel is an organization. You see them passing by. Yeah, yeah. You see the aftermath. Yeah. But they're not in the street. When you word when you word the old times and you word how and you tell me stories about how your time how it used to be, it really blows my mind. Because when I see it now, I'm just like, eh, they're really careless now. Here yeah. is very reckless, right? It's almost like eh, kind of iffy to be outside now because you don't want to get caught, whereas the cartel is more like very Planned attacks. Kind well, it has of thing. to be a little bit like FBI, <laughs> yeah, right? Because yeah. they're playing the big leagues, yeah, yeah. And so they have to act uh, based on where they play, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. strategy has to be. They can afford that strategy. They can afford, <laughs> yeah. you know, that that type of uh, uh, weapons or, or, or whatever. It's different. It's an organized crime mm. versus this is organized game. Mm -hmm. This organized game. Yeah, yeah. this organized game, yeah. and that that creates chaos in the streets. Mm -hmm. The other one creates chaos in this in the country. The, the, you say you got jumped, and I remember that, which I, you know, it's really no, sad. No, actually, I can tell the story. It's yeah. really, it really doesn't bother me. So, so uh, this is like wait, high school now. This is two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Yeah. So what are where so are you? What, I always, what grade I, is this? I, I, it's seventh grade. So seventh grade. I, all the years of the two thousands, that's the grade I was in. So if it was two thousand nine, I was in ninth grade. If it was two thousand eleven, I was in eleventh grade. Right? Okay. Two thousand six, I was in sixth grade. Okay. Right. So you can easily catch on. So it's in 2007. Um, this was six years after Dog Whisper aired for the first time mm -hmm. in 2001. Mm -hmm. And so, so you guys, you uh, you guys left, and it was just a nor another day. I remember I was hanging out with my friend who we were doing studies with, and we were studying outside of the class because we had a test, and it was a history test, and the test was very important. I, and mom is the type to be very like academically driven, you yeah. know, get good grades. Yeah. But you guys, my mom specifically was the type to, you get good grades and at the end of this time or end of the quarter or the semester, I'll give you this, mm -hmm. right? So then it was an incentive. Yeah. So I, school, I was like, okay, history, is, I love history. I love geography, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, mm -hmm. we travel around the world and I can tell you everything there is to know about everything about it. Mm -hmm. So one of the days, um, and this was six years after, so this is about what, like season three, season four of Dog Whisper. Mm -hmm. You're pretty popular, especially in Inglewood, because you're the only mm -hmm. guy who walks around the neighborhood with the dogs off leash and walks daddy and, and would do all these things mm -hmm. with dogs. And people were just like, mm -hmm. there, that's the kid with the parents, mm -hmm. you know. They, and at the same time, guys, I was also, uh, and in Stockton and La Brea, I would do sometimes classes. Oh, uh, Ladera Park. Or demonstrations. Uh, yeah, Ladera And also, at Ladera, yeah. that's right. And also at the park where we used to live in the, in the Yellow House. What was uh, that park? Edward Vincent Park. Okay. Sentinella Park. Sentinella Park. Yeah. I also did a lot of- uh, Workshops. A, a lot of stuff there. Or, yeah. So, so I, I really embraced Inglewood, mm -hmm. right? So I did business in Inglewood. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't just, my kids did not just, were born in Inglewood and they, what is it called? Yeah. The Freedman. The Daniel Freeman Hospital. Daniel Freeman Hospital. My mm -hmm. kids were yeah, yeah. staying in hospital. No yeah, it's not ah, there. Like it's not there. Like a few blocks away. No? No. It's what now happened? a housing. That was the last, like. Last of the Mohicans. You guys were the last kids that they were born and raised there? Mm -hmm. oh. That was the last. So, yeah. So, 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 so then. Yeah, yeah. So, so you guys, so it was, you guys were pretty, you were pretty popular and you, you were in Florida for a minute. And me and Calvin were in school. Calvin was still in. Um, yeah. Uh, elementary. Yeah, yeah Centinella. Centinella. And Shout so, out to Miss Gallegos. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> the, the one who endured. Bad Calvin Spanish the most. teacher. Um, <laughs> Always yeah. have when you remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I was studying and I remember it was at lunch. And um, and just I was just walking with my friend. And I remember I was like, hey, we need, you know, tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do the same thing. And just before I knew it, it was this one kid just yelling, you know, like, hey, this is Cesar Milan's son, get him, right? And I looked around and I seen 
like a bunch of kids surround me. And then I just, I just remember like, oh, and I just remember thinking like, oh shit, boom. And so I just remember getting cocked right in the back of the head. Boom, and I was like, all right, cool. And I just ducked and I just held my stuff. And then um, I was covering my face. What, 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 what made him just? So yeah, I, I got jumped and I remember like, um, they were stabbing me with the pencils and the pens I and remember. shit, right? And I was like, well shit, I just remember feeling this sharp pain in my neck and in my head. And I was like, what is that feeling? But I just kept protecting my face. And I, w and I was just, I remember having my hands up like this so I can see who it is and I can tell by the feet. And the kids, I can see like, okay. And then when I got up and they just stopped, it was just, it was just like a quick, and then it just stopped. And I got up and I saw like who did it. And I was like, all right, cool, got you. And I can remember how I felt because I didn't say nothing. I remember going straight to class and I was just like looking at the teacher. Like, and then the teacher was like, Andre, what's wrong? You're like bleeding everywhere. I'm like, I don't know. Right. And, um, what do you mean? You well, because you can't really you shut down mode. Yeah. I just like, Oh, like Angry? you're going to rage. You, like that is, I remember at a, as a kid, I was thinking, I have a lot of people who I know that would damage these kids. Right. Because we grew up on a block that was all bloods. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh man. And they went to the same school as me. So I was like, oh, this is no problem. Right? And I was just thinking, mm -hmm. revenge. How, revenge, how can I get back? How can, and I don't want to get into right. that, but yeah, so. Um, but you I, already let, let that I, go, so, still? No, I've been over it. Okay. I, I go to Inglewood all the time. You know me, I go to Inglewood all the time. I just, and that's not something I, after doing ayahuasca, yeah. I'm like, oh, this shit is whatever. This is yeah. little kid shit. Cause in Mexico, it's probably different, yeah. it, you know? So I, I don't, I don't feel bad i don't feel like oh a i should victim. feel sorry yeah, i don't i'm not a victim shit happens and mm -hmm. you're a kid and kids are good i i remember bullying calvin and that's just mm -hmm. you know you do things as a kid that you don't do as an adult if you grow up mm -hmm. right and so the healthy the healthy stuff right and so i remember afterwards they sent me to the principal's office and the principal called grandma mm -hmm. then grandma got freaking scared mm -hmm. and was like holy shit illusion which is my mom uh you know, you need to come over here. And my mom, I remember hearing her on the phone, like freaking out, like breaking down as if the world collapsed. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm on the next flight home. Yeah. And so she left the same day and came back and it was like six in the morning when she got there. And you know, the thing about like fighting or getting jumped is that the, the damages that you receive in that moment is very like not, not the same a day or two after because you start to swell. Mm -hmm. Right, you start to swell. The bruises show. Mm -hmm. the, the actual damage actually will become on visible the on the body. Damage will become the visible body. in the moment you start leaking. It's like, eh, it's like not not really the worst. But then when you, your hands swell or your 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 sides are bruised and you can't move, that's a different feeling. So when she came, that's when everything was visible. And mom freaked out. I remember her like, okay, and she was just making a bunch of calls. And so I remember going to the hospital just to make sure that I wasn't. Uh, like, like really, really hurt or anything, but it, um, the doctor was taking out like the little ball points, mm -hmm. the little bolitas that you find at the on the end of the pens inside like my head and yeah. shit. So I have them right here on my neck, and I was like, oh okay. And so mom was like, Re you could tell she was planning some dark stuff, and I and I just like whatever, whatever. So time passes on, and you come home and you're like. Sorry, Andre, I had to work. This is for the family. You've always made it known. That's one thing. You've always made it known why you were gone. And you would always show us what, what was accomplished by being gone so long. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, that's, I think that was a very important thing because you you've also felt guilty for leaving a lot of the time. You're like, damn, I don't want to be away from my kids. I don't want to be away from my family. So you definitely made up for it by showing us what you can accomplish by working hard and staying to it, even though there are things that happen outside. There's a sacrifice that needs to be made. And as a you guys being, being males, uh, and at one point you have your own family and, and, and sacrifice, if you don't have something, you have to sacrifice something because it, it has to grow in a sacrifice, right? So you come from the bottom. So you, you, what, what did you sacrifice first? Time. Right? Time is the first thing you sacrifice. Then is your body, then is your heart, then is the thing, all of that stuff. But but you have to do it from a place of sacrifice because you're offering this for a better good. You know what I mean? So it's worth it. For, so it's worth it. It's not, 
I never, you know, went into drugs, into women, into uh, not working or anything like that. It was just building this. And at the same time, always know that I have two kids. You know what I mean? Because I grew up in that environment. Yet my dad was away, but somebody was there with me. Right? So somebody was there with me. My mom was there. The animals were there. And my dad would come back. And he never explained anything. He never said anything. He just showed that this is what men do. You know what I mean? And then, of course, I want well, I and with my kids, I want them to understand why do we do this? So it's a rational understanding, not just figure it out as you go, right? Because that's what I have to do. You know, so why, why do I feel this? What, who's going to tell me uh, how should my spirit, my instinct, my heart, and my mind view this moment? So I don't develop traumas. So or I don't become a victim. Or I don't blame my parent. You know, so, so unconsciously, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew why. And I always knew because you guys were a man that you needed to understand sacrifice. It was very visible. You know very what I mean? Visible. You needed to understand. But you're never here. Uh, you're never here because we don't have Anything. things to be here. Yeah, yeah. Like Apparently. what it takes to be here in this house with this car, with this food, throwing this party. I have to be there. You see what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't be in two places. I didn't have the money. So somebody was going to enjoy my work. You know what I mean? And, I, and on top of that, I didn't have the understanding. Like, how do you manage money? How do you manage a family, money, and also your lifestyle? Or your, your future? So when did you meet Yoshi? <laughs> what is that have to do with it? Because when you started to grow, you started to to have to get like a group. Joshi has my hairstyle has been with me for what? 10 years? 15 years? 12, 15, 15. At least. Because we yes. were in Inglewood. My relationships are long. Yeah. Because I, you know, You're Jada. Loyal. Jada is what? 20, 30 years? I think as almost as maybe like four it's, years away from you. How so old are you? 28, like 28, 28 years. 28. That's so how 90, long I know 94, Jada. 94. And so uh, Joshi is my hairstylist. And, and, and uh, so you're saying that because of what? Yeah. Because uh, you, you were saying I had to, for the, for the, our parties and stuff, I remember I'd get my hair cut from Yoshi. Yeah. Um, and you, you hadn't met him until you had at least gone through a couple... Um, seasons. Seasons. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. first season of Dog Whisper was $1,500 per episode. And as you know, one episode, first episode, which uh, anybody knows which episode was the first uh, one? Nunu and the Doberman. Uh, no, no, Great Dane, Great Dane, Great Dane. Yeah, sorry. The shiny, was... shiny floor Great Dane. Yeah, the shiny floor Great Dane <laughs> so with the carpet. that took to be uh, edited and all of that. It took... Uh, Five days, three days? It took about, uh, about two weeks. Whoa. Why so? Uh... Two weeks. Yeah. Oh, it's two episodes in one. It's two people. Two That's families. Right. Uh, that's the first episode. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was the first episode. Nunu, a chihuahua, and Kane, the Great Dane. One was aggressive. The other one was fearful. Mm -hmm. Was he scared of floors? Yeah. He was shiny, shiny floor. Shiny floor. That's shiny right. Shiny floor. Remember, she used to carry a, a carpet. Mm -hmm. The red carpet. That's, okay. yeah, it was that's red, the first time. Or black carpet or some shit. Yeah. That's the first, like, the creativity that people do. To avoid fear? To nurture fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to avoid to avoid is what I did. Face it, right? To nurture, carry a carpet for a year. Everywhere they went. And then Nunu, right? Nunu is, she couldn't date no one. Yeah. Tina. <laughs> she, Tina she couldn't, couldn't date, date nobody without Because the she would yeah. she would have nurtured to the aggression of Nunu. I remember every I remember when you first went there, and all you did was just grab him. <laughs> you just grabbed him like so gracefully, like here. Let me show you that I don't care. And then you <laughs> Yeah, and you're just, oh, it's okay. Yeah. And you just hold him in. And she'd be, and you know, the reaction, the initial reactions are almost, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Right. But it's like, no, you're not. You want this dog to progress in a better way. Mm -hmm. So you're almost unsure of how to react, right? Embarrassment is more, diff is a different dynamic. That was very difficult, guys, uh, for me to, um, to, to do what I do on TV. Right, because I'm, 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 I'm showing the weaknesses of people or the lack of knowledge of people or there are, yeah, so the areas where they're, where they're not strong, right? 
and, I, and then here I have to come and show the strength in a way that I don't offend anybody. Right. Right. And I don't, I don't come across like an asshole or like I don't come across like a, a narcissist. Yeah. Or but egocentric guy. But that wasn't even a concern because you barely even spoke English. So the concern, <laughs> was, the concern was, what do I say or how do I say it? I was very careful. Yes. I was very careful. If you guys That's see, how yeah. I came out with the three words. Yeah. Like, okay, Trust, I'm gonna, respect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shut things down and I'm going to start decoding this so I can create formula, rituals, and symbols. That's when I got in touch more and more into my Virgo side. Right? Mm. Beautiful structure, clean. Beautiful structure, clear. Mm -hmm. And, and, and because English was not my first language, it forced me to, find to create my words. own language. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you, you know? See, yeah. If you see, like, the beginning season of Dog Whisperer and then the end, the last season, you'll see, like, the, the English barrier, like, yes. not being there as much, right? Yes. You know what's funny? You've... And I, I, I've, always, I've always asked why. It's probably because you were so focused on the actual craft and... and your, your faith, um, but you never ever, uh, for lack of better words, you never really talk shit about a anybody other's methods, you know, anybody else's methods. They, you, you would go in, you wouldn't make anybody wrong, you wouldn't blame nobody, and you would help. Some people go in and make people wrong, and they, you know, they point out who, who to blame, and then they say, well, I'm not going to do it this way. This guy does it because I think that's wrong. It's just opinionated. You had no opinion. It was just, this is the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to argue with you about your, your journey and, you know, spiritually where you are. Fight, flight, avoidance or surrender, whatever, wherever you are, I'm not here to, to trigger that in you. What I'm here to do is just help. Mm -hmm. And this helps. Uh, I noticed that no matter what, no matter how many times you were thrown uh, mud on your name, you never once raised a hand back you know what i mean to level out you know in your in probably in your in your perspective it could have been just for like well this is not fair yeah i was very tempting right very tempting to to respond yeah. with anger to respond with hate to respond uh are irrational but then then something internally as you guys know i always listen to a voice so when i was 13 the voice said Say you want to be the best dog trainer in the world. When I was 21, the voice said, go to America now, December 23rd. I jumped the border. Then two weeks later, the coyote guy comes, the one who's going to help me. And the voice said, this is the one. Right? And, and so internally, what the voice has always say, why, why I don't jump into fights with, when, with haters? Because the most precious things we have is time and I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste my time damn right and the only way I can I can um, guarantee that I won't waste your time is because I'm giving you the best fucking energy I have yeah. and the best psychology I have and the best actions I have and I want the same in return mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. you know what I mean I'm committed to giving you my very best and time is your most precious thing you have I then agree. it's life mm -hmm. because you can have life and don't know what to do with time so you're wasting your fucking time yeah okay therefore you're wasting life that's that's that take it to the bank yeah take that's the sauce you most important thing mm -hmm. is time mm -hmm. so so you have to uh, uh, you have to love it you have to uh, it's the most precious thing you have without that you have time in jail. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I've always been, so I every time I hear you talk, it's a really hard threshold to keep separate from when I'm trying to see you as a father to somebody who is not only motivational, but inspirational, mm -hmm. right? You say things that are just so damn true and so naturalistic that we, again, we've, we've done ayahuasca together, right? Me, you, and Calvin. So when you say things, I see them for what you're saying. I see the deepest root of what you're saying at the most simple, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I'm like, damn, that's so inspiring. And, every, and it's hard to like, is he saying it as a teacher or is he saying it as my dad, right? Is he saying it as somebody Both. he wants to be? And then it's like, 
how do I take this one? Because this one I can use for my business life or I can use this one for my personal life. Because in my personal life, I'm constantly working on myself mm -hmm. and Calvin's constantly working on himself. So the words that you say, is, for me, not only because you're my dad, but from what I've seen by action, it's, it's a higher value than Anthony Robbins, than David Goggins, than, and then people who I don't look up to, but I also watch their videos and say, I can, I can relate to that, or I can see that as an inspirational idea, or I can, I can live and I can fuel off of that saying, right? Because Calvin says some really deep shit that I'm like, damn, how? You don't even listen to Bob like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you don't really, like, follow the way That's why I introduce as the people that have been with me from before. It just blows my so mind. So your spirit is part of my spirit. It's part of my knowledge. It's part, it's part of our, our, our wisdom. Mm. My, my grandfather being 105 is inside of you. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of you tapping into it if you want to. But yours is your heart, mm. right? That's, mm. that's the one you lead with, right? Mm. But if you want to uh, say some spiritual thing, you just calm that down and go to your spirit. I feel like it's more spiritual. When you say something, it's you're telling me like here. Yes. I've, I've, sh I've done this <laughs> and I've experienced right. the negative side of the that things that I'm right. trying to show you. Don't do stupid shit because I've done, I've gone through what people want to give on me. That's Negative right. stuff, right? People who want to take things from you, people who want to infiltrate your, right. your inner peace. Don't right? attract the wrong right. people. And so you, you say things, even, I've, even as being the person that has gone through those negative things, you still say things in the way where it's like, that doesn't mean anything. Right. That doesn't, I'm not a victim. Right. So this podcast is another way for my creativity to show the world um, how to be a better human. You know, a better, better human is not just you yourself, you as a father, you as a brother, you as a, a human with animals, um, and, and how we utilize time. At one point we talk about the divorce and all of that stuff and how we went, I think it's very important for people to see because the world is going to go through divorces and, the, and, and you know, uh, uh, everybody's going to want to know how do you guys deal with it? Oh, that's and a I good think point. as a family, don't we done bottle it in, up your emotions. That's right. I think we, <laughs> bottle, we as a, as a family, yeah. three, three males, you know, three males, they, we have to balance the, the female energy and the masculine energy at the same time. Uh, uh, we can show you how well we did with our time at, 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 at that. Uh, probably not uh, from a conscious perspective, but now we can do it more conscious. Like now we can rewind the tape and say, this is how we did it, guys. This is how we put the movie together. This is how we erased uh, traumatic events or situations that we didn't agree with and it was hard for us to cope with. And, and then just let them go and, and go back to Camp Surrender, happy-go-lucky, Camp Confident. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm.